So this video was supposed to come out back in December, but I ran into some technical issues. Namely, a power surge from a winter storm knocked out the power supply on my editing PC while I was in the middle of editing this. So that's why it's coming out now instead of like a week or two ago. For this video, I went digging through the internet archive and came up with a few obscure old racing games for DOS that vaguely resemble Super Mario Kart. The first game I found was called Scunny Kart, and we're already off to a great start because it has one of the least appealing title screens I think I've ever seen. This is Scunny, by the way. Apparently he's appeared in other games, but I've never heard of him before this. I think he's supposed to be a squirrel, but the name Scunny would imply he's a skunk. I don't really like this character. His design makes me uncomfortable, and it's even worse on this box art I found. Scunny isn't even the weirdest character in this game, though. We also have a purple duck named Knackered, a crocodile named Handbag, a freakishly large ladybug named Golfie, whatever the hell this thing is named Raggy, and an octopus in a baseball hat named Pussy. Anyway, let's talk about the gameplay. Skinny Kart is the most blatant Mario Kart ripoff we're going to take a look at today. This game is basically just Super Mario Kart, but worse in almost every way. You have 50cc and 100cc races, the track designs are obviously going for a similar look, right down to the multicolor block barriers on a few of them, and there's even a 1v1 battle mode complete with balloons as hit points. Most of the Super Mario Kart power-ups are here in some form, but the only ones you can actually pick up and use at your discretion are the rockets, which replace the Koopa shells, the banana peels, which are, well, banana peels, and the bombs, which are just banana peels with a different sprite. The other power-ups just kinda activate when you run into them. There are time and point bonuses that don't have any real effect on gameplay. Two of them make either you or your opponent smaller for a brief period of time, and there are three others that are useful in theory, but never in practice. The only other pickup of note is a monkey that slows you down considerably for a few seconds. The few things that Scunny Kart adds to the Mario Kart formula all make the game worse. There are these random pillars littered around the courses that'll stop you dead in your tracks if you hit them, and they can easily be mistaken for items. There are also these pits randomly scattered around some of the tracks, and if you drive over one, you'll fall in and get stuck for a whole three seconds, which is more than enough time to fall behind. They also added water hazards on a few tracks that slow you down slightly. These are honestly fine on their own, but I discovered a bug where if you drive into a water hazard while there's a monkey on your back, your speed gets reduced all the way down to zero and you can't move until the power-up effect wears off. Now is probably a good time to bring up the myriad of technical issues this game seems to have. The most obvious one that you've no doubt already noticed is the performance. Scunny Kart is CPU-bound, which means the game speed is determined by the speed of the CPU it's running on. That's a frustratingly common problem with old DOS games, and this is what the game looks like running at 100% on my 400MHz Pentium 2. Thankfully, the developers did include a built-in speed setting. This setting throttles the game down to playable speeds by intermittently halting code execution, which means the spare compute time can't render additional frames, and as a result, this game either runs unplayably fast, or at a god-awful frame rate. I settled on playing this game at 70% speed, which I think still may be a bit fast for this system, but at 50%, it starts to turn into a slideshow. 70% is the best compromise between playability and a somewhat tolerable frame rate. I am actually kind of curious how the game's built-in speed reduction compares to hardware-level CPU throttling, but not enough to go through the trouble of actually testing it. The other major issue with this game is the sound, or rather, the lack thereof. The MIDI tracks that play in the background work just fine, but the rest of the sound effects are completely absent. I'm not sure if this is a bug, or a problem with my system configuration, or just the way the game is, but it feels really weird playing a game with just music and no sound effects. This is also some of the most generic sounding MIDI music I've ever heard, and it really started to grate on me after a while. The final problem I have with Scunny Kart is that it's damn near impossible to quit the game. When you exit a race, you're presented with two screens in a row verifying that you want to quit. The default option on these is to keep playing, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, except this game has no key repeat delay. If you hold down the confirm button for even a fraction of a second after choosing quit on the first menu, the game will think you chose the retry option on the second screen that appears right after, sending you back into the race menu. 
Half the time you don't even see the second screen appear, the game just sees the button firing and sends you straight to the race menu. The race menu, which has no back button. The only way to get back to the main menu from here is to start another race, quit, go through both confirmation screens again without holding down the button too long, and then finally you're back at the main menu. What you've been seeing is actual footage of me trying to quit the game to change the speed setting and getting caught in this loop. I'd say it's quicker to just exit to DOS and reload, but that's not much of an option either. This game doesn't have any key combo to exit that I could find anyway, and what's worse, not even Control alt delete or ACPI shutdown commands reset the system while Scuddy Card is running. The only way to quit the game is to either navigate back to this main menu, which as we've already established is a pain in the ass, or perform a hard reset of the computer by holding down the power button. This is the first time I've ever had a game try to hold my computer hostage, and it makes me so glad modern OSs have an extra layer of protection between programs and the hardware that prevent them from doing this kind of crap. In Scunny Card's case, it's probably just bad coding, but imagine if something actually malicious could lock out hardware functions this easily. Anyway, let's move on to the next game I found, which is called Go-Kart Race. Based off the title alone, I had no expectations for this going in. But to my surprise, it's actually pretty good. Way better than a 1996 DOS game called Go-Kart Racing has any right to be. This is a Korean game, so everything is in Korean, but there's no language barrier here. The designers added English translations for all the menu text off to the side when you select each item. This is really well thought out and makes for a great first impression. It also helps that the title screen music is fantastic. Starting the game takes you to the character select screen, and I must say the sprite work here is excellent. The racers are all these adorable little chibi caricatures, and they have a surprising amount of detail to them. I think these honestly look better than most character sprites on the SNES or Genesis. I was initially a bit concerned about how fast the characters rotate on this menu. This effect is clearly CPU bound, but it seems to be the only part of the game that is. Once you get into a race, everything runs at a fixed speed. The frame rate here is a bit choppy, but it's a huge step up from Scunny Kart. Go-Kart Racing actually feels good to control, the only downside being that you do have to use the keyboard. Unfortunately, this game doesn't seem to be compatible with gamepads and joysticks. The gameplay here is still very Mario Kart-esque, but it does have a few elements to try and distinguish itself. You can hold up to two power-ups at once, and fire forward and backwards, and each pickup gives you multiple shots. The tracks are larger and feel a bit more like real-world locations than those in Super Mario Kart, and they're littered with barrels that explode when you run into them. There's also a bunch of cute little details, like the character victory animations, and this guy who pops up during the final lap. I'm not sure there's a whole lot else to say about this one. It may be derivative, but it's pretty fun and very well made for what it is. Someone clearly put a lot of effort into this one. The final game I found is called Super Karts, and that sure is a title screen. The options here are really in-depth, at least compared to the other games we've looked at. The game claims to support joysticks, but I couldn't actually get it to work with mine. The keyboard controls are fully customizable though, so at least I can play with WASD, which is way more comfortable than the arrow buttons. There's also options for low and high graphics settings, and an option to manually set the frame rate to anywhere between 8 and 60 FPS. This is an ingenious way to compensate for variable CPU speeds, as it means a comparatively powerful system like mine can actually run the game at a smooth frame rate without issue. This feels way better to play than any of the other games we've looked at so far due to that alone. Upon starting the game, we're presented with a character select screen where we choose an ethnic stereotype, and then it's off to the first race. Now, based off the title and screenshots, I thought Super Karts would be a more or less standard kart racer, and while it does have a few wacky arcadey elements, this game leans much more towards a go-kart simulator than anything resembling Mario Kart. The karts here have a smooth acceleration curve and a ton of weight to them. You have to plan maneuvers in advance and take corners very deliberately to stand any chance of winning. You also have a limited supply of fuel, and you have to pay for repairs and upgrades to your kart between levels. There's also a turbo boost, and bonus pickups, and a live system. This game can be a little all over the place tonally. Also, this game is hard. 
like, hard enough that I couldn't make it past the second race in the couple hours I had to play it for this video hard. The first race isn't too difficult once you get a handle on the controls, but on the second track, the roads are much narrower, making it much harder to avoid walls, and you really don't want to hit these things. They slow you down immensely, and if you're behind, it takes quite a while to catch back up. Whenever I got into last place, the race was pretty much over by the time I caught up to the rear of the pack, and it doesn't help that whatever early 3D game engine they're using here has the same limitation as Wolfenstein 3D, where all the walls can only be at 90 degree angles to one another. The barriers zigzag around corners, so a slightly misjudged turn that would normally just be a brush with the wall means a head-on collision in this game, where you have to back up and readjust to get out. That said, Super Karts is easily the best made game on this very random list I decided to put together. It feels like the type of game where someone with enough time and patience could master it to the point of being able to win every race with ease, and I don't think the same can be said about Go-Kart Racer or Scunny Kart. There's also a ton of small details here, like the camera tilt when you turn, and the animations that play after each race. This is definitely up there in terms of production value when it comes to old DOS games, which shouldn't be surprising seeing as it was published by Virgin Interactive. It even got a sequel that looks to be a bit more refined than this initial entry. If you were going to pick any game out of this lineup to play for yourself, Super Karts is definitely the one I'd recommend. And I think that's just about it for this video. Of course, thank you so much for watching, I hope you all had a good holiday, be sure to like and subscribe, and I think that's all. Bye!